Welcome back to Enlighten Up for episode 65, opening the Akashic Records, soul lessons, and trusting your abilities with Aaron Gallagher. If you have all been listening to the show in the last month or so, you remember that when Aaron was on, she talked about potentially reading Brian's Akashic Records because Brian wanted to compare her reading with the record keepers to Maureen St. Germain's reading with the record keepers back from February. And so it was a little test for him and it was interesting for us all to listen in and find out, did he actually get similar messages? Did he get exact messages? We're going to find out and I think you're all going to be actually very happy with the results. And later on in the show, we're going to talk about the importance of soul lessons and trusting your abilities and not having to look outside yourself for the approval and the worth that you are worthy to do the work that you really want to do in this world. Many times we look to these institutions to give us accreditation that we are then worthy of doing our work when in fact that is the very system that enslaves us to make sure that we are constantly looking outside of ourselves. So we're going to talk about that later on. And of course, this was a great episode, lots of friendly banter, lots of jokes actually, and we're all going to learn a little bit about Brian that none of us, including me, even knew right in the beginning. So let's jump right into the episode and find out what Aaron and the Record Keepers had to share with us. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Enlighten Up. Uh, I am Nicole Frolick, one of your co-hosts, and I am here with Lisa Watson and Brian Cronenberg. And we are joined back again today with Aaron Gallagher, who was on our show last talking about the journey of addiction. And also we touched on tarot and briefly spoke about the Akashic records, which Brian put her up to the very important task of perhaps reading his Akashic records, just so we could verify if he's actually having them read correctly. And uh, before we go any further, I'm going to just jump in right now and give you guys a quick glimpse into some pre-recorded show talk that we think you might want to hear. Good. So today, are you up for doing Brian's Akashic Records on the air? I'm ready. I have my whole, I have everything ready. I got my nerdy reading glasses. I got it all. I'm all set. He's like okay. saged himself. He's grounded himself. He meditated no, oh, I can't this morning. Cro- I can't cross my leg. That's no, none of those things happened. <laughs> um, I did listen quickly to, I can't cross my legs. Um, none of those things uh, happened, but I, I did listen to the Just don't uh, last the last one, so I can ask the same line of questions, so we can you know be Perfect. make it really easy for the record keepers. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they really need you to make it simple for them up there, Brian. <laughs> mm-hmm. I just want to make sure that they're like, oh, I remember these questions from before, (laughs) so they can provide us with the same answers. It's going to be so boring because word for word, it will be the same. It's what I'm expecting. And they're going to be like, oh, we remember this guy. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. Okay, so Aaron, welcome back to the show. Thank you for being back here with us and for um, doing this very important task for Brian. Thank you. I'm really excited to see what happens because like you guys and like everyone else, I'm just as surprised by what the master's teachers and loved ones say in the Akashic Records. So I am just as excited to hear what we're going to get. Do you think that they're very thankful right now that Brian has simplified things for them? Yes, I think that they were like, well, wait, hold on. It's too confusing. We need this guy to like explain what, what's going on to us. <laughs> that's, that's, that's good. Well, I also know it's very important that you know who I am. So I want to make sure the, the record holders know how to actually pronounce my name. I don't know if Nicole's ever said my entire name before because it's Brian Koenigberg. Oh. Maybe they pronounce it, <laughs> maybe they pronounce Awkward it silence. differently. They pronounce it differently in Canada. We do pronounce it differently in Canada, actually. We pronounce it the correct way. The the Koenigberg way. (laughs) I don't know who that co-host is. I had a client the other day, and her last name is what we say in America is Poirier, which is P-O-I-R-I-E-R, which I'm sure in Canada is pronounced differently because of the French. But uh, she was like, no, it's Puhi. And I was like, what? Puhi. Nice. (laughs) That's got a silent and, Q. 
<laughs> when I told her that we say Poirier, she screwed up her face in the most um, <laughs> distasteful way. <laughs> she, she must she must get it a lot, though. I'm sure you weren't the first person. Yes, exactly. And because she, I think, uh, I think she lives in Canada right now. So she's kind of goes between. <laughs> See, why can't anyone pronounce my name? That's why. You know, what's funny name. is that in order they use to- the wrong letters. That's why <laughs> there should be an A in there. <laughs> yeah. So we can, so we can make it easier for us. Duh. <laughs> but yeah, actually to access the Akashic records, many people do it in different ways. Some people do um, meditation, some people use a pendulum, some people use sacred prayers and poems, some people just sit in, in solitude or silence for a few seconds and tap in. And what I like to do is, well, the way that I learned was to learn a sacred prayer from this woman, Linda Howe. She's been teaching, and I'm sure some of you, one of you may have heard of her uh, work, but she's been studying and teaching the Akashic Records for like 30, 40 years plus. And so she has a sacred prayer that she uses, <clears throat> excuse me, but um, if you use it as a practitioner or on the air or anything else that makes money, you have to get it copyrighted or get permission from her. So it's really interesting. So um, as a teacher myself, I created my own sacred poem slash prayer, <clears throat> excuse me, using the space of the records. I went into the records and and basically worked with my own master's teachers and loved ones to create this sacred prayer. And in it, I enter your name. So now I'm going to have to learn how to say your name and not screw it up on the air for the very first time. See, so I knew that was Thanks important. for that pressure. <laughs> well, the, you see, maybe that's why my higher self told me p to pronounce it that way so that the Aaron would be prepared properly. Yes. And, and say it the right way. Yeah. It's yeah. a difficult, it's a, it's arguably a difficult name to pronounce because it looks, you know, like, like Koenigberg. Looks like Koenigberg, but it's very simple. K Nig Berg. Okay, good. I'm writing that out phonetically. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that's the easiest way. Berg. Absolutely. It's perfect. Okay. Brian. Awesome. Yes. Bri B <laughs> Rye Yan. <laughs> Brian like, uh, all I can think of is Stewie and saying, uh, hey, hey, Brian. Hey, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> it's a family guy reference for it some is, for it those is of a, you. It is yes. a family guy. <laughs> in, in, in Chinese, my name was Bu Lian. Ooh, interesting. I hate it. Can I call you that now? You can call me <laughs> Bu Lian. Actually, I, I didn't like it. So it's, it's so interesting. When That's why I want to call you that. <laughs> when, you, when you have a name that does not translate um they it's it's also phonetic for them so they take the letter b which is boo that's how you say the letter b and then the r it's it's very interesting and this this will explain a lot to to a lot of people in terms of unfortunately we make fun of chinese people how they how they say fried rice and they often say fried rice and and i probably fell into that into that camp but when i lived in china I realized, oh, they're not. It's not that they can't pronounce it. The R, the letter R in pinyin, is pronounced with an L sound. Mm -hmm. So they're just they are they're not mispronouncing fried rice. They're pronouncing it phonetically in Chinese, fried rice. So anyway, um, I I didn't like the the phonetic pronunciation of my name, Bu Lian Ke Nigabuga. Is basically <laughs> I know right. <laughs> He's like, okay, wow. get it out, get it out now, get all this laughing so, out. You are, wow. you are just giving me way too much material to use in the future. I know. I, use, I, use, I whenever they would say that, I would always think in my mind and sometimes say aloud, you know, like I'm your nigga. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you're like, well, no. But uh, so so anyway, I came up with I came up, I read this story. Um, it was it was an article in a, in an English uh, newspaper about somebody that had been living in China for a long time. And he, he didn't like it as well. He didn't like the phon phonetic pronunciation of his name. So he said, well, my last name, you know, means something. So I was like, I'm going to look up the meaning for that. And I loved it so much that I looked at, you know, what my last name means in German. Koenig, Berg. Koenig uh, means king. Berg means mountain or hill. So, I mean, the literal, trans the the literal translation of my family name in German is King of the Mountain. 
So I turned that into uh, in, into Chinese, and I gave myself a Chinese name, Wong Zhong Shan, which translates to King of the Mountain. And that cool. then confused Chinese people because it sounded very similar to in a, a very, very famous Chinese person. They're like, oh, like, they're like know, no. what's his face? I'm <laughs> like, no, it's because blah, 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 this. And, you know, they, they, they very much appreciate it. The Chinese people appreciate the effort that I put into to give myself a name because it has meaning to me and it has meaning to them. And it sounds and every word and letter has one. meaning to them yeah, as and well. It, and yeah. it makes more sense. Wong Zhong Shan. Yeah. It could also mean King of the Hill like that TV show. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Somebody likes her animated TV shows. <laughs> I never watch. I never watch TV, so I don't know why I'm making these weird references. Anyways, <laughs> so okay. Um, before we go into the records for Brian, um, exactly how did it start for you? Like, what was the process that like? Did you get it intuitively right away, or was it something that you had to train yourself at? With the records in general? Yeah. Um, so it's interesting because I had heard of the Akashic records in the beginning because I started with tarot and I had heard about the records here and there and they just really piqued my interest, but I didn't understand them. So I stayed away for a while because I was like, I don't know, I feel like that's too like expert for me and I was still learning. And so I shied away from it. And then a friend of mine offered um, an Akashic Records slash astrology workshop in LA. And I thought, oh, that'll be a cool way to like dip my toe in. So I did that and just fell instantly in love and got obsessed right away because I thought that you had to go through like hours and hours of training before you could even open the Akashic Records. And what I learned in that workshop is that anyone, when facilitated by someone who knows what they're doing, can open the records in, in that facilitated space. And having the teacher I had, her name is Helen Vonderheide. She's fantastic and amazing. Um, she really helped to hold the space for all of us to like have our experiences however we needed to and wanted to and, and play in, around in there. So after doing that, the same teacher offers beginning classes, advanced classes, healing classes, and others. And she was having a beginning class right after. And since I became so obsessed, I was like, okay. And so I, I did the beginning, advanced, and healing classes all in a row because I was like... I can't, I am learning so much about myself and my path. And not only that, but I got really practical information about how to run my business, who to run it, who to target, um, what prices to charge everything. And the work that I did in, <coughs> excuse me, the work that I did in the records around my business, around my finances, around my soul's growth and, um, and all of that work had me probably doing the amount of work that would it would have taken me like five years in my own time in like a year in the records i got so much done and my business like doubled in income and that's why i teach it now because i feel like um i feel like i was led to teach after because i think a lot of people will learn the records and they get um self-conscious and they're like oh i couldn't teach it people because there are people out there teaching that have been doing it for like i said 20 30 years plus and I kept getting pushed by my master's teachers and loved ones to teach it myself. But I had only been learning for a year and a half, maybe two years at the most. And I kept getting self-conscious, not self-conscious, but just like, oh, me? Like, I'm not a guru. I haven't been doing this for 20 years. I haven't even been doing this for five years. And so I had to keep going into the records and being like, is this okay? Is this okay? And finally, someone else tapped into my records and she was like, you need to stop worrying about it because your master's teachers and loved ones are like, like wanting you to do this. That's why you even got the idea is they put it, put it to you that way. And she saw that one of my masters had, um, in the space of the Akashic records, which is kind of like a master library, if you will. Um, she, she said what she saw was like a different hall or area of the records opening up kind of like this new shift that's happening where a lot more people are getting not getting spiritual, but learning and opening their awareness to things um, that are more prevalent than what we just see with our eyes. And she said, I see him like walking you into this new hallway, into this new area, which we kind of um, thought to be like, and when I opened my records more later, it really felt like I'm supposed to be making the records more accessible to the new, sh the new like wave of people that are coming in and a younger crowd and, and make it more accessible to people that may or may not 
they may just like me think it's too um, expert level for them or something. So I kind of feel like I'm a part of that shift and everything. So that's really how I got led into it. And I'm still um, learning. So I do a lot of my own readings, which I really love. Akashic records are now my favorite thing to do um, with along with tarot and also teaching. So it's been an enlightening and, um, and eye-opening road and to see like how it helps people and, and myself at the same time. It's just a really great healing tool. And you said there's many different ways to do it, meditating, the pendulum, some of the Yeah, everybody that you has different. How do you do it? So um, I opened, so after using my records to like find out like, is it okay for me to teach? And um, because the records are such a protected space and they're up in the fifth dimension. And so, and they're really, um, like if you, for instance, if you open somebody's records and uh, this happened to me once where, <clears throat> excuse me, this happened to me once where I was opening the records for someone and she became really upset and crying and it, it made me not be neutral anymore. And when I become not neutral, um, the records can sometimes shut you out because they have protectors basically called the Lords of the records that protect the space from any, um, from anything that doesn't, that isn't the highest light and love. So when it starts getting like that, they'll like kick you out, you know? So it, it was really interesting um, to open the records and create my own prayer in there because they, the Lords of the records and the masters, teachers and loved ones kind of, um, helped me to create my own prayer um, in in the way that I learned, but with my own words and my own, um, you know, with the work that I do, as you guys know from the last time I was on the podcast, it's all about, you know, um, really transforming through pain and darkness and stuff like that. And the, um, the prayer is more closely associated with, with kind of ascending out of this time space continuum really and connecting with that space so i created my own prayer in the records to do that that's very do, cool you do uh do dolphins and whales have anything to do with akashic records i don't think so as far as i know i mean if we open the akashic records and asked i could maybe get information about we, that why do you ask well, we had read that somewhere before that or somebody somebody i i don't know we read it somewhere before you know some bullshit yeah. online or whatever that said that <laughs> the Akashic records are, at, you know, like stored, I don't know, a backup copy or something in dolphins and whales. My, my wife is looking that. at I mean, me if they have that. funny, but I'm, I want to believe she's actually the one that read that and told that. To I'm, I'm looking at you funny if two of you are in the same room as me. The only thing I can remember about dolphins and whales is that I know that they're very highly evolved beings who've also come here to send us messages. And the way they communicate, right? Light I don't language. know much about it. It's like, yeah, they have their own. Because I could ask my questions in dolphin if it helps. <laughs> <laughs> and if they answer back in dolphin, I'm not sure how to um, <laughs> yeah. translate that. And, and, and either do I. And I don't know of anyone in the audience would either. <laughs> When um, okay, I first so started speaking light language. Brian said that it sounded a little bit like dolphin and whale. Sometimes it can sound <laughs> dolphin. -y. That's interesting. I would now. I'm going to add that to my list of things to ask the Akashic Records because they probably like. So not only can you open individual human beings Akashic Records, but you can open the Akashic Records for anything that has a vibrational frequency, which is anything. So like your so pets could, or something like that. Yeah, so really? I can open the Akashic Records. Well, you have to get permission, and it's kind of funny with pets because you either have to, like, if you are at the level I am maybe, you have to, like, tap into their soul and ask them if it's okay or, like, look at them directly and ask, and if they, like, wag their tail and look at you back, then it's okay, but if they walk away and they look, like, you have to, like, decide whether they're okay if you open them or not. <laughs> so that's interesting, but you can also open them for a planet, for a mineral for like a crystal you can open the records of like i could open the records of my tarot deck um whiskey? you can open the records of yes you can open the records of whiskey and ask it you know Sweet. like it's history that is great and distillery questions or whatever else <laughs> but you can open really anything and ask like my, my uh, teacher opened the records of earth 
And because someone in her class had said like, oh, the earth is like dying and we're ruining her and she can, she's in pain. And it's funny because we, she tested it by opening the records of the earth. And she was like, earth is very like, um, not affected, like not, not, not affected, but kind of egotistical. She was like, I'm fine. Like, I'm fine. Like, there's no problems. I'm all up with volcanoes and shift. Masks exactly. Of land and yeah, I got it handled. Like I could make you yeah. all go away tomorrow if I yeah. wanted to. She's like she kn- she knows her power and strength, and so she kind of laughed. In the records are really irreverent, a humorous place. I've noticed when I ask questions or when I'm in a state, they'll kind of like play play with you, you know, a little bit and throw back jokes. So it's really lighthearted, actually, in the Akashic Records, and I think they do that on purpose to like. Because w- when people go in there, they take it way too seriously, and and well, I think it depends on the one. person accessing the yes. records i mean if 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 yeah I, I i think if you're a very serious person i think it can come across as a very serious thing well we talk about that yeah. with anyone who's channeling information basically your own personality it's coming through you so you're going to have your personality come right. through. So if, if you can, when you deliver the records to me, if you can do it like in a Homer Simpson voice, that would be great. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny because, well, it's weird because I am, I guess I'm like sometimes bitingly kind of dark in my humor, but for the most part, I'm very literal. And when people, t- you know, tell me jokes or something, I'm like, I don't get it. Hmm. So that's why I'm interested by when the records are really humorous back to me. I'm like, I, I laugh, but I'm also like, you know, it's not really my um, my personality. But it's funny because, like, uh, for instance, one time I was really not beside myself, but I was in a state and I was like really in a chaotic part of my life. And I'm like, at the end of this, because que- I was asking questions, and they'll ask you questions back because sometimes it gets conversational in the Akashic Records. I'll be, I'll ask a question, and they'll be like, well, what would you do in this circumstance? And if you would do that how would that whatever and so i was asking questions and i said and i was like i'm just so tired and i just want peace and there was silence and i heard peace is overrated (laughs) (laughs) and i was like i'm crying and beside myself here so why are you just like throwing this back at me but i actually started laughing and i was like oh my gosh i'm taking this way too seriously so it really helped me to be like I'm not here to experience peace. I'm here for this chaos. You know, this is what it's supposed to be right now. So yeah, it's interesting. Um, okay. Quick side note before we um, start, cause this happened while we were talking. Um, but while you were describing the Akashic records and the hallway and all of that, I got a stabbing headache into the left side of my brain. And this has been happening for the last couple of days now, like it's just, and I know everyone's kind of going through these like ascension symptoms. Everyone. Was, yes. Mm-hmm. Categorically. Everyone. Yes. They just <laughs> may not be aware of it, but they are. Or everyone or everyone who's aligned to that, to that. That's a better way to say it. Cause I got nothing. <laughs> uh, you do have something. You just don't know you have something. <laughs> But yeah, it's like crazy. Like sometimes I'll be listening to something and then I just get this stabbing pain like into my left. And I I don't say it to be like, um, like it's false or anything because that's not what I'm thinking. But it's crazy. um, The because I take it as like the headaches as expanded consciousness um, or the pineal gland activation uh, happening. But damn, it's like it can be really painful at times. Yeah. And if it comes out of nowhere. My ears were ringing when you were talking about it. Yeah, I get a lot of ear ringing as well, especially lately. But you, when you said the head pain, you also said left side, and that's fem- the feminine side. So there might be something to that as well. I don't know. Yeah, I would say there is. Yeah, because that's about re- receiving. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. yeah, yeah. So okay, let's jump in and um, and find out more about brian because we all want to know more about brian hell yeah yeah let's see let's see what's going on so yeah um and as we know like everything especially with your free will decisions change every single day so we'll see it's going to be interesting to see based on the questions you ask depending on the questions you asked how much the question answers 
or this information I get back shifts based on where you are now, sure. as opposed to where you were then. What, what were you, when, how long ago was this that you got this reading? Six Goodness. months ago? Yeah, spring. Okay. I think it was February. It was episode 34, I think. I think it was I'm going to be February. interested to go back and watch that after this or listen to that after this. Yeah, I think it was about six months ago, roughly. Okay. All right. Okay. So the first thing I need is your full name, like my, I would say how the IRS knows you. <laughs> so it would just be Brian Koenigberg and that's it. Or do you want to add a middle I name? I was about or? to give you my social security number because I think that's really how the IRS knows me, but I'm not <laughs> going to do that because um, yeah, no, I am no. also humorous. Uh, like the Akash. <laughs> uh, Brian Warren Koenigberg is my Warren name. Yeah. Wow. Just learning so much about you today. <laughs> That's probably why you have a left side headache. <laughs> <laughs> or just He's like, I'm the cause of that. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right, so is there anything else before I open your records? Or should I just go on in? Yeah, knock, knock yourself. Okay, we're out. ready. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to take a few minutes to ground myself, breathe, and then I'll start the prayer. As we elevate and transcend all of time and space and allow our awareness to slowly expand, it is within this expansion that our illusion of impermanence falls away and we are free to stand in a state of grace and humility as we honor this passage into the eternity of Brian's soul. It is within this state that Brian Warren Koenigberg stands boldly in the light of the Akashic Records. It is within this state that Brian Warren Koenigberg surrenders to the infinite wisdom of the Lords of the Records. And it is within this state that Brian Warren Koenigberg lovingly acknowledges the guidance of his master's teachers and loved ones. The records are now open. Okay, cool. So we got the records open. Um, sometimes I will just sit in the space for a few minutes just to see what I see, if there's any general messages. Mm -hmm. That's what we... Should I do that first? Yeah, because that was uh, that's what happened last time. She had some opening remarks, I think she called them, or it was this similar, similar idea. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, um, I never know how the information is going to come in. Sometimes it's images, sometimes it's words, sometimes it's full sentences. Um, sometimes it's images that to me make absolutely no sense and also add up to some kind of metaphor or something like that. So sometimes I'll just be like, I see a dinosaur. I have no clue what that means. It sounds silly. But then when we start going deeper into it, um, we'll, we can pull out, pull stuff out of that. Cool. So I'm just going to kind of like see what I see and just kind of, um, you know, uh, stream of consciousness, say what I see. I'm seeing um, music notes uh, having to do with music and like I see a band playing on a stage. I don't know if you are a musician or if you enjoy live music or what that has, what, what's going on with that. But I'm also seeing like a band in a studio recording. Um, um, I'm seeing... I don't know why I'm seeing you play guitar. Are you a musician or have you played guitar or is any of this? I, I would not quantify myself as a musician. When I was a child, I took guitar lessons. But for you to see musical notes doesn't surprise me. I, my ex-wife is a professional musician. And, uh, oh. and, and I was married to her for a very long time. And my daughter is an uh, incredibly talented musician. So, I mean, if I were to assign meaning to it, I would think it would have something to do with my daughter. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, 
I don't know why this is kind of strange and funny, but I'm seeing like the the um, the sound of music. I <laughs> like the movie and Julie Andrews singing in the hills. Nice. I don't know why. Because <laughs> it's a great movie. Um, yeah, it is a great movie. <laughs> Um, but I just saw like a huge landscape of rolling um, green grass, open space. Yeah, music keeps coming in. So I'm seeing like outdoor festival. It's like builds as I'm talking. So it's like, it's just a large roll, like a huge um, outdoor musical setting. Um like an amphitheater. I'm seeing like, I think what, what the big outdoor atmosphere is showing me is like expansion, expansion. Like I'm seeing the word expansion. So I'm feeling like everything expanding and getting bigger. So I'm seeing you like standing and like opening your arms really wide. So it's kind of like, you allowing in what I'm feeling is like you allowing in and expanding your mind, like being in this podcast and doing this work is like you expanding your mind in a way that feels uncomfortable for your human self and feels uncomfortable for your like 3d self. Like, uh, like I don't want, I don't like want this to be true or I don't get it. Or I don't like, we don't understand or we are uncomfortable with or don't like, or do not don't like, but we're uncomfortable with what we don't understand. So I'm showing that like, well, through this podcast and through the work you've been doing on a soul level, you're like expanding into this. Um, I think that's why I'm seeing this huge expansive, like rolling hills. It's because it's like doing this work. This is like the next step for your soul. Um, and that's, I feel like I see Lisa coming in. So it's like, that's why you, that's part of the reason that you're expanding your life and your family in this way by marrying her, it's like, it's also helping with the expansion of your soul. Um, and so I'm seeing like the connection of your souls, you and Lisa and how you guys, are, I seem like a teeter, teeter totter almost like where you're all the way down, she's all the way up or she's all the way down and you're all the way up. And you guys are kind of like balancing um, each other in the way where um, you might be like, it's almost like she, she's I'm seeing her in the 5d you in the 3d and it's almost like you balance each other out so that you're both uh a little bit more balanced equally as it applies to the earth embodiment of being human and the spiritual embodiment of being a soul or a spirit does that make sense it does um okay cool so yeah that's what I'm getting just for initial initial messages okay um, but I do hear that this is good work for you. It's like, it's, <laughs> they're showing me you like working out and sweating. Oh, that doesn't so, happen. <laughs> <laughs> that this is like, it's like work that like, it's like going to the gym. It's like, you don't want to do it. When you get there, you're like, this sucks. It's uncomfortable. You're sweaty. You're like, ugh, why am I doing this? But afterwards you're like, okay, I like that. That helped me. That had me see me feel my body in a different way or see my experience in a different way. So even though it may feel yucky or like, why the hell am I doing this? Or, or why have I been led in this space that I don't really understand? It's saying like, you do deep down understand it and you're slowly coming into awareness of it through this work. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, not only in your relationship, but you know, in everything you're doing and it's slowly expanding, um, and it will keep expanding in a way that you're comfortable with as opposed to just too much all at once. Um, but the advice that they're giving me to give you is like to stand in your power and your truth of uh, what you feel. They're not saying what you know, because you already know what you, they, they, they're like, you are really strong with what you know, but what you feel is more important right now. So when you get confused, tapping into the feeling and like into your heart space and standing in the in the power and truth of that, even though there's no like proof, quote unquote proof and just be, and being okay with that and allowing the process to unfold naturally as opposed to like, um, trying to understand it. Does that make sense? It does. Is there something keeping me from becoming aware or opening up? Let's see.
it's basically like up to you. So like, as you expand and grow, it's because the, they're showing me choice. So basically, no matter what, you're going to continue opening and expanding and all this stuff, but it's your choice on a conscious level, which is all about the brain, whether to let the guard down a little bit and let it be more malleable and movable, or whether you're going to resist and be like, I need, you know, either proof or, or that's not, that doesn't sound right to me or, and I don't feel that you're that type of person. I, I feel in this space, I'm feeling that you are open um, to this new level that you've hit and that you're on. And um, so the only blocks are in your consciousness, in your brain. So it's like you have complete control over whether it's interesting. They're showing me that you have like complete control over when to let go of control. So it's up to you to kind of, um, they're showing me like you on a boat. So it's like, it's up to you to steer, you know, um, to either let go of the road, to let go of the oars and let yourself be kind of like, um, I also saw this in the very beginning. Like I saw a big body of water that, that is like moving and rushing. So I see that it's like, it's almost like a river doesn't stop at the boulders. It goes around mm -hmm. the boulders and kisses them on the way by kind of. So I see you kind of in this, like the more that you try to like row yourself in certain areas, the harder it's going to be. But the more you just kind of, cause I see you letting go and laying down in the boat with your arms behind your head, like, like, and your legs crossed kind of like just enjoying and chilling out. Um, so there could be blocks, but you're in control of, of those. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. do I, do I have a purpose in, in my life in this lifetime? Okay. Let me. Or does my soul have a purpose? Yeah. So um, it's funny when I ask this question to the records because they always ask for more, not more, kind of more specificity because every soul has many purposes, especially with where they are right now. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask like, what is your soul's purpose at this time? Mm, sure. If that's okay. They're showing me like play, like to, like you will expand and open your awareness as you um, like play and get messy and just because they're showing me like, they're showing me like two yous. They're showing me like your inner child jumping around, playing on a playground, like letting yourself be completely free and your heart be uncaged. Like they're showing me, not that your heart is caged, but they're showing me like in order to illustrate what it looks like it looks like if a heart was like enclosed in a cage or something and then just like opening and then like a bird flying out of a cage or something it's kind of like um this opening and um to do that we get to like it's about tapping into your inner child and that inner playfulness and letting that come out so what i'm feeling um and purpose i think so humans get purpose mixed up with career and we think that, ooh, it's 11, 11 here right now. And I just looked at the clock. Okay. Just saying. So we get. Yeah. And I'm, and, and I'm purpose. not asking along that, that line. I don't have those confused. Yes. Good. I didn't think so either, but um, yeah. So yeah, a lot of people think career, that's my purpose or should I change careers or whatever? So I have people switch their questions depending on career or purpose, but yeah, I'm feeling like the purpose of your soul, especially right now is to, um, let go of any like rigid analytical structure based linear thinking and just really tap into freedom of, of your heart and soul getting messy, getting like um, doing things you wouldn't normally do. Cause I just got the word risky and I was like, I didn't want to say that online, but I do because it's like risky for you. It's not, I'm not saying risky like skydiving or something, but like <laughs> risky for you, which might be, <clears throat> you know, um, connecting more to your family, or it could be, um, 
you know, opening your heart in a way that you closed off to um, because it's it's hard to look at or or uncomfortable. So it's really about kind of this new landscape is leading into you into connecting with people, um, everyone in a in a more intimate way. So I see intimacy coming in. Um, and this is another thing where people get intimacy mixed up with, you know, s- sexual stuff and marriage. And I'm like, no, you know, intimacy is just about connection with other mm-hmm. human beings. So I see you. Yeah. I see you connecting like this time in your life is about, it's like threefold almost where it starts with connecting with your inner child, doing this work of like becoming more playful and allowing yourself to kind of get like more messy and, and open. And that will lead you to um, connecting on a more like loose, open level with, I'm seeing like people that you haven't talked to in a long time or family that you don't necessarily understand, or maybe like, I'm seeing like a definitive line between you and like either an old life or old or people you haven't, that you're like may have fear in interacting with. And I see that like disappearing and you kind of being able to go back and look at that stuff and talk to those people again. So yeah, I'm seeing like rifts being um, like, uh, what is it? Repair. Like I'm seeing the word like uh, relationships being repaired. And, but again, it's up to you. This is like your next soul journey is like, tapping into your inner child in order to get into this playfulness, which gets you into a state of better communication connection with people that you love, um, which leads you to like a deeper intimacy, not only in your, all your relationships, but within your own self, like you'll, you'll gain this intimacy with yourself. Um, And it's just, they're showing me like a big circle, like it all connects where when you're able to tap into that part of yourself, it's going to lead you to greater, connection with your own soul, which will lead you to create to greater connection with people you may have been um, not like interacting with lately or had a rift with or whatever. And um, they're really showing me that like, they're showing me the whole like life is too short, you could lose someone and all of a sudden be like, I wish I had done this, I wish I had done that. So that's, that's kind of like where the advice comes in where like before you get to the space where you're like, I really should have done this and I didn't. And now I regret it to do it now. Okay. Does the circle have a color? Well, it didn't before, but right when you said that I heard yellow and I saw okay. yellow. So yeah, I'm um, feeling is, yellow. is there a two, it made me think of two things. Um, when, when you were talking, one was business related and one is a uh, personal relationship related Is there a lesson I'm supposed to learn from the current bad relationship I have with my daughter? I mean, what you were talking about at the end is very much in line with with what's going on with my own with my own child. So is there a lesson I'm supposed to learn? All right. I mean, the first thing I saw before they even answer the question is that they're showing me her and they're showing me that she wants to connect with you. And it may be, I don't know how she is um, like on a human level. Like it may be that she's like, leave me alone, don't talk to me or whatever, but her soul does want Mm -hmm. to talk to you. So um, I don't know if this is really a lesson, but what they're saying is um, if it's either like, if it's to the point where I'm not ready or she's not ready to actually like have that relationship where you talk or connect, um, then the best thing you can do is you, you know, go into any kind of meditation and ask her soul to come forward and start doing soul to soul work where you're interacting with her on that level. Um, it reminds me of sometimes in the records, they give me my own memories in order to give an example. So it Mm -hmm. makes sense. So, when my, uh, me and my dad have a really rocky relationship. And this is so funny because dad and daughter, dad and daughter, it's the same thing. So that's, okay, that's really interesting. So um, my dad and I have a really rocky relationship. Um, I talked about this in the last um, podcast that um, 
he's a really chronic alcoholic and I'm daddy's little girl. Like I love him and he loves me and we have a really strong connection. And at the same time, it, he's really toxic. And, um, and I know the soul lessons I'm supposed to learn from him, but on a 3d level, like on a human level, it's really hard for me to be around him because I take all responsibility for him and I get sick if I, um, hang out with him too long. Cause I'm doing everything for him and taking on all of his pain in my body. So, um, just recently about, I don't know, six to eight months ago, he got really sick. He was in the hospital and he was intubated and he was like on his deathbed basically. And I couldn't be there. I was here in Washington or I was here in California and he's in Washington. And because our relationship is so toxic in that way. And because in the hospital bed, like he has to be restrained when he's in the hospital because he's like, get me out of here. He's like, I said in the last podcast, he's all about freedom. So if he's being stuck in a bed, he's like, why the hell am I here? Get me out of here. So they had to restrain him. And, um, I just kept, I was so, I felt so, um, helpless because I was here at home in California and my dad's up basically on his deathbed. And my, the work that I do with Reiki and other things is to help people transition to the other side. So if I had been there with him in person, I could have like held the space for him to do whatever he needed to do, whether that was die or come back or whatever. Um, what I did and what I realized is I talked to a friend and I was completely out of my mind. I was just crying with grief and I didn't know what to do. And she said, you know, you do this soul work all the time in the Akashic records. Why don't you sit and do meditations and speak with his soul? And it really just, whoa, it hit me that, um, all of the work I could be doing. And that is the reason I realized in retrospect why I wasn't able to be with him in the hospital room because I wasn't supposed to be there. I was supposed to be supporting from afar. So this is all to say that you can do that same work and it's just as important as being with her in the mm -hmm. physical to, um, to connect with her. And that connects. So they're showing me again, this circle that this connection with your daughter on a soul to soul level is this connection with, this big rolling earth where you're opening and expanding. So, okay. So they're showing me the connection that you're opening and expanding on a soul level, um, into new, um, you know, different areas that you never thought you'd go into before in order to do this kind of work that you couldn't have done before, right? Like you couldn't have been able to interact with her on a soul level if you were just not, um, attuned to this, um, spiritual right. work. So, um, so it's kind of leading you into that space to be able to do that. So what I did with my dad was I closed my, it was really easy. People think, I think that this type of stuff has to be like facilitated. You really just have to close your eyes, imagine yourself standing in a big empty room basically. And that other person standing across from you and just take a second to look at them and say, I see you and acknowledge them. Um, however it looks, you know, however you look, however they, they look and just say whatever you want to say or hug them or just look at them and breathe with them. Um, for me and my dad, what I wa wanted to do was explain to him because he was trying to pull out his tube in intubation. Um, and so I told him like, step by step, this is what the doctors are trying to do. They're trying to keep the tube in until you can um, like do this or that, or, or until you're not fighting. And then when you're not fighting, they'll be able to take it out. So if you stop fighting, do, so I was explaining to him what to do, to do in the hospital room and he ended up doing it and they took out the intubation tube. So, um, so there is a lot of work you can do okay. on that level. Yeah. That's what okay. I'm feeling. Um, and that's the lesson, you know, is the, is the expansion and knowing that you can first, ex uh, work with her, to heal your soul, her soul, and that connection okay. first, and that it will seep into both of your um, conscious Does lives. Does she and I have uh, any past life connections? Yes, absolutely. Um, let me con tap into that for a second. So what I'm getting and seeing is that you're in the same soul group. So there are different um, soul groups that people come in with. For instance, 
so I've been, ex I've had it explained to me in this way, and this is the way that I like to, that, un that is easily understandable for me is that the way human beings are connected is kind of like um, a river and how it has little streams and tributaries and stuff like that. And that we're all part of this oneness. We're all from the same stuff, mm -hmm. you know, but as we flow down or upstream, there are little streams or tributaries or rivulets or whatever that kind of go off of that big stream. So those are kind of like the soul group. So it's like, we're all connected as uh, in oneness as human beings uh, on the earth plane. A and then there's like these little streams of soul groups that get together to, um, to it's like missions so like um i have i'm a part of a specific soul group that's about pain and how it um interact how we use pain in our society as human beings as a whole not just american society but um how we use pain to either break open and change our lives or to ruin ourselves you know so it's like that's part of, or use pain as a, not a catalyst, but to get to another place. And so I see you guys as being kind of this, um, because when I picture you guys together, I see like a line of, or a, a number of souls around you as well um, in this group. Let me see what, like, if you have any like mission or what the connection is there. Yeah, I keep getting intimacy, like to break open. And this isn't just intimacy for you and her. This is in intimacy in general as um, at the more and more attached we become to our emotions and our human experience, the less prone we are um, sometimes, some people, to experiencing real true connection and intimacy because it's really hard for us to be vulnerable. So I'm feeling vulnerable, vulnerability and, and intimacy and it's kind of like that's your mission, not only with her, but in this soul group to like tap into um, connecting in that way. And in order, like I said um, before with my like pain and darkness, alcoholism, like uh, being an ad addict for 17 years, that's being powerless and being in pain all those years was what pushed me into being completely out of pain or, or to be in my fullness and fulfilled. So it's almost like this rift between you is causing you both to experience and open yourself up to intimacy in a way that at first is really uncomfortable. But then as you break open more and more is kind of, um, you're doing this work for this whole, or this whole soul group is doing this work to um, support other human beings in doing that as okay. well. Um, there was also another thing I was going to. I'm seeing stuff for her, like um, I'm seeing, I was seeing like a, an angel or halo light. So I think that's like some kind of archangel energy or angel energy, but I feel that I'm kind of not stopped, but like that's her soul path and soul purpose and stuff. So it's kind of like the Lords of the Akashic Records are saying like, like it's, that's her and not, I don't have her, I basically don't have permission to go further sure. with that <laughs> as it you know applies to her stuff. Um, do you, do you see anything about my past lifetimes? Like number, how many, how many lifetimes I've lived or anything significant about what they yeah, were? Let me see. Let me ask. So what usually happens when I ask about past lifetimes is, um, because it's funny because human beings, we like things to be quantified. So whenever we ask number, they give it to us, but at the same time kind of laugh about it. Cause it's like, they're like, who cares? But, um, so I'm going to, so I'll ask that how many, and then I'll also ask, um, usually what happens is that the most important, important past lifetime that applies to this lifetime comes up because sure. there are so many that it's like, yeah. So, um, I'm going to look at, I'm just going to kind of feel into that. I keep getting five, three, four, five, three, four, five, three, four. That might be um, 
also they're saying also keep an eye out like they're like because they know uh i don't know if it's because they know you like proof or people like proof but they're saying to keep an eye out also in the upcoming weeks for like those numbers in that order five okay. three four um yeah and let me ask about just like just past lifetimes and see which one pops up I'm seeing you as a doctor. Okay. Um, it's interesting. The This book that I read about the Chicago World's Fair is coming up. So I don't know if that... Let me see. I'm just writing this down. Chicago World's Fair... Doctor. So I think the Chicago World Fair part is like showing me what time, what like year it was. I'm like Googling. Oh, so Chicago World's Fair is called the World's Columbian Ex Exhibition. In eighteen in the eighteen eighteen nineties or eighteen eighties. Yeah, it's interesting because right away when I see the do you as a doctor, I'm seeing as like I'm seeing like old school, like really. Um, not primitive, but like early um, medical instruments, you know, like an early mm -hmm. stethoscope and a, like a monocle or like an eyepiece. Um, and like, I'm seeing um, more having to do with not treating or with patients, but more like the lab work. Like I'm seeing a microscope and like microscopic like Petri dishes and stuff like that. So I'm seeing you being more on the research side, but I'm seeing you as being like someone that is connected to discovery. Um, and, and like, like I'm seeing like tinctures and um, medicines Research, discovery, tinctures, medicines, and um, like inventing inventions, like inventing new um, medicines. It's funny though because I'm seeing um, I'm seeing it also not get I'm not seeing it get dark, but I'm seeing how it could like like I'm seeing opiates, <laughs> like the beginning mm -hmm. of opiates being. Um, discovered and used because I think opiates were used like I'm seeing it's funny because it's connecting to my own memories of I think I watched was it the pro I think I watched the Ken Burns prohibition no it was a um, documentary about the history of drugs and it was showing how in old really old timey catalogs they used to sell like a little ornate box with like two syringes mm -hmm. and heroin in it but because they, they thought that was like like, oh, this is how you cure your pain. Um, so, and then all of a sudden people started getting really, really addicted and dying. So they're showing me that. Yeah. It, uh, it makes me think about, you know, the, the idea of invention. I've always had lots of ideas. I've, I've always been an idea person thinking about new ideas and concepts. Um, but it's, I guess I'd say I've had, I've had failure to launch. And I, th I think the relevance yeah. of that question is what we're going through right now where, you know, I'm, I'm developing an app and it's a very innovative idea. Um, and I'm just curious if there's, if there's something um, that, you know, keeps me from, you know, manifesting the, the success of these ideas that I've had. Okay.
It's like a, um, it's like, what is my, I have a coach who calls it abundance limit. And this is where, um, so our subconscious has, keeps very, I'm seeing like um, everything being very like analytical, written down, like everything needs to have, like, I think that's where this past life comes in. Like when we're doing scientific hypothesis, especially as it pertains to medicines and stuff that, uh, that will be used on actual people and all that stuff that it's very important that it gets perfect or right so that you don't hurt people or whatever. And I'm seeing that like, um, that getting everything perfect and analyzing it and stuff like that works really well for this research and development as it pertains to, you know, drugs and, and medicines and being a doctor. But when it pertains and applies to something like an app, which is all about like your, you know, like innovation and ideas that no one else has had and ideas that everyone else may say that's stupid or that makes no sense that when you keep pushing away at it can break open a new thing that no one knew before. And you can say, ha, who's laughing now, basically. Um, So two things. So that's the first thing that like, not applying any of the analysis or the stuff that not doing it the way you've always done it, being really innovative in the way, the ways that you um, either promote or research or thinking outside the box, like getting really innovative with thinking outside the box. And, um, and what's the second part I'm seeing? Oh, and this abundance limit thing. So our subconscious knows very well. And like I said, keeps very specific tabs, just like we do, uh, you know, analyzing um, on what we have and have not done in our lives, what risks we have taken, what, um, how far we have raised the bar and how far we're willing to like jump beyond it and risk everything for an idea or a, a feeling or a thing that, or a thing that may be completely unknown that we have no clue what's going to come from it, but we just push ourselves anyway off the ledge. Cause we're like, it doesn't matter. I got to figure it out. Um, the subconscious knows our level and our limit, like what we've done in our lives. And it wants to keep us below that in order to keep us safe. So to the subconscious, it looks like, oh, I'm doing such a good job. Like I'm keeping this person safe. Like, look at the work I'm doing. This is great. They're like staying. But to our human experience, it also feels comfortable because we're like, oh, this is great. Like I, I'm doing things the way I've always done them and it feels good. And I'm getting, it's like the illusion almost of getting stuff done. So it's like, yes, you're getting stuff done. But at the same time, there's this limit or abundance limit based on what your subconscious tells you is how far you've gone and you can't quote unquote, you can't go above that. The desperation comes in of like, no. And so what they're showing me is like the lesson or the advice is to break through that and to go over that abundance level by doing some kind of risk. Um, Maybe like hiring someone you wouldn't normally hire, uh, getting, um, reaching out. Okay. What they're showing me is to reach out to people to connect with either investors or um, connecting to other people that believe in the idea that may have, um, other it's like they're showing me a group of people sitting around a table like brainstorming like when it's just you or your small team that you're using to develop the app now that it may become stagnant and with new either and they're showing me also a fear of like oh if I do that then other people are going to know my idea and oh I don't like that or whatever but they're showing me that like it's okay like you have to risk those things in order to get to the that level and to impact many many people does that make sense Okay. Is there um, is there anything to learn or to understand about my relationship with my wife? You know, a purpose or the, the connection because we've we've always felt a really strong connection. Mm-hmm. Okay. <clears throat> So I'm seeing, it's interesting because the first thing they normally show me is um, is a like why you're connected in this lifetime. But what they're showing me is your soul contract. A- and what, because th- they want to make it very clear that, um, that your soul contract was to meet at a very specific time in your soul's growth. 
and and so I'll get into what the work is in a minute, but they want they just want you and her to know that like you already know that um, it may have felt like the most imperfect, perfect timing that you guys met when you did or that you um, got to know each other when you did. But basically, they just want to say that the timing was was predestined. <laughs> like they, and it's not about what time it was in your life and how old you were. It was about like, oh, you. When you're at this point in your soul's growth, then you will meet this person. Um, in order to, um, they're showing me like when you're a kid and you're trying to get over a fence and you can't make it, and they, somebody puts their hands together and you step on them and push each other up that's kind of like what what you're doing and this goes back to also the teeter totter like analogy um so it's like a push pull so yeah first they're showing me your soul contract that they just want to reinforce that like you met exactly when you were supposed to do, to in both your soul's growth and that now um they keep showing me for you is especially that they're showing me layers of soul growth and expansion. And they're showing me that like you rised up a level or your new level was when you met her and when you, and everything kind of exploded. And at first it was really scary because it was like, what the hell is happening to me and what, what's going on. And then, um, but over time, because you're on this new level, the, the things that are coming in from that connection and the new awarenesses that you're made that, that are coming in, if they would have happened when you were on the level before you're, you couldn't have even, uh, what's the word? Like absorbed mm -hmm. it. Like it wouldn't have even come in. Like it wouldn't have even made sense at all, but because she's almost like a facilitator for you in a way, um, mm -hmm. like, like holding that space of, um, holding the space around you. So as you're learning, growing, expanding spiritually, she's there to make it make sense. And um, also vice versa, that you're there to ground her in the, um, like I'm showing like super grounded, like, like uh, it's funny. Cause I'm, sh I'm seeing like, I'm seeing you very, very grounded, like on the earth and I'm seeing her kind of floating mm -hmm. in the 5d. And so like, you're reaching up and grabbing her hand and she's like, you're like pulling her down. But as you're pulling her down, she's up in there floating. So you're kind of floating up to meet her. So it's almost like you're pulling the ground mm -hmm. up to meet her and she's pulling the spirit down to meet you. Okay. I have one last question. Okay. Do you see anything? regarding my planetary origins. Okay. I'm seeing, so we just experienced, I don't know if you guys, uh, Lisa or Nicole have heard of um, the lion's gate. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we just experienced the lion's gate. Yeah. And it's funny because the records will show me things and I'm like, I kind of sometimes have to Google them because I'm like, I don't know what this is. So this is what's happening. Like I know the lion's gate very well, um, but I forget who it's the, like the lion people or the Leon. Um, I'm going to look it up. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing for, it's not really planetary. It's more um, like a different civilization or a different realm, like a different spiritual realm. But I see you very connected to the these, I think it's called the lion. The feline people. <laughs> yeah, yes. Thank you. It's like, I'm trying to look it up because I forget what they are. It's like the, the lion people or something like that i, think it's the, I don't know i think it's the that. feline oh it is mm -hmm. okay yeah so i'm seeing that that's why johnny loves you 
Everybody loves me. Oh, are you one of those people where cats love you and you don't like? The- oh no, I'm a huge cat person. <laughs> we have a cat named oh, you Johnny, are. and he they clearly have a connection. Yeah, it's the Lyrans. That's what it is. L y r a n s. The Lyrans. It's like lion people. Okay. Um, yeah, it's lion feline beings from Lyra. So that's what I'm okay. seeing. Thank you. I I am seeing I am seeing constellations, but I think the constellation is connected to this, like the Leo constellation, the lion. I just keep seeing lions, lions and cats. Okay. <laughs> Okay, well, that's all the the questions I have. Is there any other things that you that you see, or we can let Nicole and Lisa jump um, in and dissect it? Well, I'm gonna yeah. Well, first, I'm gonna see why this connection to the Lyrans, um, or what the connection is about, if anything, and then um, I'll open it up a little bit, or I'll close your okay. records. Okay, this is really beautiful, actually. So everything for you, like part of your soul contract, again, goes back to this intimacy and connection and um, repairing, repairing Mm -hmm. relationships. Um, And um, they're showing me that like when you're tapping into, you know, reconnecting with your daughter on a soul level or physical level or or however it looks, that um, using this soul group that you are a part of these Lyrans, um, just even in like meditation or closing your eyes and saying like, I'd like to connect to the Lyran people about, um, about this situation with my daughter. And what, what I'm seeing is that it's like the lion people are all about, you know, well, lions in general, courage, bravery, strength. So basically using them to, um, to align with, and to absorb this uh, Lyran energy, which is that of courage, strength, and bravery, so that you can connect. I think that people think when they hear intimacy, they think of it as like, oh, being vulnerable and open and, and not passive, but just kind of like softening. But it's also about being really strong um, in your own mm-hmm. self that that intimacy and connection is so important and um, like stepping into the strength of, of who you are. Like I'm showing, I'm seeing like the masculine, like stepping fully into the masculine, which is a protecting space, like protecting, protecting, but not closing off. You know, you're protecting um, your connection and all that. So using the strength, bravery, um, and perseverance and courage of the like the your Lyran okay. origins to connect strongly to that intimacy. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, it's really beautiful because they the first thing like when I'm asking about your connection to the Lyrans, they show me your daughter. So I was like, oh, that's really sweet. So I'm going to close the records because I'm feeling like it's like they're like it's time to close. <laughs> Let me grab. Okay, give me a second. I lost my prayer thing here. (laughs) Okay. It is with grace and reverence that we honor the lords of the Akashic Records. It is with gratitude and unconditional love that we bow to the Master's teachers and loved ones. And it is with integrity and faith that we give praise to the Holy Spirit of Light. Into the realm of Akasha, we proclaim the records are now closed. Thanks. You're welcome. That was beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was really, really 
that was really amazing. It made me, it also like, I can feel it in my body being very like calm and relaxed. <laughs> it made me want to have you read my Ingrid. records. I know we were talking about doing another, another show for you or for you guys. Right. I yeah. think you should. Yeah. You did a great job. I yeah, it was awesome, Aaron. Yeah, I think that would be cool. And also, um, yeah, it's funny because the records are such a um, vibrationally high, like a different space. So like whenever I get out of the records, I'm like very hungry usually. Like <laughs> I'm like star i'm like i'm like i need to eat like a burger and fries That's right what now i've been thinking for the last five minutes i'm starving <laughs> i just want to eat <laughs> so i'm curious did anything i say line up with what um the other um, one that's said? hard to, that's hard to say i mean word for word no um of course but <laughs> i mean there were some there were you know some similarities if you if you you know I guess dive dive deeper into it. I mean, it was a different. I asked yeah. the same questions, but you know, and you, you know, you were moving, you know, in and you know, you would say something, and it would be in line with questions that I asked, uh, you know, that I asked before. There was one that stuck out to me, which was when you asked about your inventions and failure to launch. She pretty much gave the same exact answer that you got from Maureen. No, I disagree. She said you need a team around you. She, Maureen told me I needed to not be number one. Right, but that she also mentioned having a team. Yeah, you needed a she team. She said you needed a team, that you couldn't mm -hmm. do this stuff by yourself mm -hmm. and that you needed, and I feel like that that's what Erin said, that the more people you have around you and that you let share in this and help you with it, that that's going to help you launch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's part of the soul contract. Like we're talking about, I mean, it's not just about your daughter, that intimacy and connection is the big and letting your walls mm -hmm. down because when you allow yourself to like the ideas to get more out there, it's like, you're not going to lose them. I think that's the fear underneath it. Either I'll lose it or it'll be not right. mine anymore or whatever. And yeah. And that's more like um, that, that also goes back to intimacy and connection as well. It's like taking risks, letting that. Right. Yeah, exactly. And letting those walls down. Oh, it, yeah, it's it's interesting because the Akashic Records, it's like every day you could ask sure. the same questions and get completely different answers because you change your, your free will changes every second. And also, you know, your emotional ups and downs. And yeah. Oh, well, also just, I mean, the way I see it is what benefit other than just proving it to you would you get from getting the same answer? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, sure, okay, for the sake of you getting proven right, but perhaps there's more information that you didn't get in the first time that would be important right now for you to know that would help clarify things or give you more puzzle. Oh, absolutely. Pieces. I thought I I I thought what you shared with me today, um, maybe I was in a more open place, but I thought it was more impactful. It made some things made more sense to me um, than before. It was more intimate, I feel like, you're reading. Yeah, which is like if you're, one of your soul contracts is intimacy and every day, even if you're not working on that consciously, your soul is, um, you know, that means you're opening more and more every day. So you're going to, yeah, get mm -hmm. more intimate answers as well. And it's like a medium reading almost where every person that reads you is going to get different information because different mediums get information different ways and and connect differently with spirit, you know? So it's like interesting that not only is it the people that are doing the reading, but also where you are in your growth when you get the reading also, you know? That makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I don't know about you, Lisa, but I was kind of giggling inside when she was talking about how Brian is there to ground you. <laughs> giggling because it's so true? <laughs> yeah. You're <laughs> 40. Yeah, right. Yeah, you're like floating in the middle now. Yeah, this last <laughs> couple of weeks, especially that vision of like me floating and him holding on. I think he had like my toe at one point and was just like <laughs> pulling me down, and I tried to get away. And he, yep, she's like, da 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 da, no, no, stop pulling. I like it up here. It's like, nope, come yeah. get. <laughs> 
And then alternately, or on the other side, like I saw Brian like buried in in the ground, like too grounded. So it's like she's like unearthing. Let me get a <laughs> shovel out and get you out of the ground. Yes, exactly. <laughs> More like a bulldozer. <laughs> Tee hee. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That was great. I really liked it. I, you know, I wanted to say something at some point in there, and now I can't remember what it was I wanted to say. Good. I should have taken notes. Thank uh, Yeah, there was so much in, in there. It's like you never know um, – how deep it's going to go and what information you're going to get. And it really, it also depends on the person and how willing and open they are. Oh, oh. So when you were talking about Brian connecting with his daughter and that part of the work is to connect on the soul level more than on the physical plane. I thought that was very interesting because you've already tried that. Brian, Mm -hmm. remember we did, you did that one week experiment. experiment. Yeah. Did energy work with Yeah. Oh, yeah, where he did like sent, taking basically taking her love in the form of energy and giving it to her. And although it wasn't lasting, it did have an immediate impact from him doing that. He did get a positive response. So I just thought maybe that's something you may want to start revisiting. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Yeah, and I feel like what I was getting is... Love and connection, yes, but first and foremost, she gets to be acknowledged like, and looked at in a way like, um, I may not understand, we may not understand each other in this, that, or the other way, but I see you. Like, okay. Because that, think, sorry, yeah, that is going. exactly what Maureen, Maureen told you the exact same thing in her reading. Just to let her know that you value her About- and that you're here. Yeah. Yeah, because I think like a lot of love and connection and intimacy relationships in this um, limited human perception are conditional or um, because because my consciousness only understands this much. I'm not willing or I have limits to see beyond that. And that's why just witnessing someone and saying, I see you, even if that doesn't make even if you you're like I said, limited human perception doesn't know exactly what that means, or you're just there holding the space and saying, all of you, I'm here for it. All of you, like all of it. Um, and that, that really simple acknowledgement of ICU is, is beyond all of the things that you could do to show proof wise, you know, that, that you're there for someone. Yeah. Brian, how are you overall feeling about it? I I feel great. I I, uh, I I I enjoyed it. I thought it was good um, information. Nothing nothing really surprised me. Yeah. You know, I related to I related to some of it. I really appreciated the part when you said, and I think you said it three times. Like they really want to emphasize <laughs> that you two met at a specific time. Even, yeah, and it's just because the timing was, and you know, from my point of view, it was just like I not expected, not not ready, not wanting, and just the way it all unfolded so quickly was with our first date, me speaking light language for the first time to him. I mean, it was just almost bizarre, and just like us ending up in yeah. Telluride, you know, and just. The whole thing just had the makings of like divine intervention weirdness. <laughs> like, that's why they're yeah, acknowledging it over and over because they're like, we want your human selves to know that that was p- very much planned, and that even if you're saying like that wasn't right or the, I don't whatever, that feels like that it was indeed supposed yeah, to. Yeah, I appreciate it. <laughs> just so mad, so. I personally yeah. loved the image of Brian kicking back in a boat, going with his <laughs> legs crossed and his hands behind his head, going down the river. How I roll. Yeah, let go. That is how I roll. I actually, when you when you opened the records and you brought Brian in there, I actually had a vision of him in there. I, I in the records. Yeah, I actually saw him like looking around in this 
big open space of records and and he kind of did something funny very brian-esque what what did i do <laughs> come on now <laughs> well when you said something like the record keepers asked Brian to just surrender or something like that. And I, and, and I saw you just give a face like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> like, no. Or what does that mean? Like, I'm going to just do what I do. <laughs> I probably rolled my eyes. Yeah. That's awesome. It made me laugh. Yep. It made me laugh. <laughs> so well, that was cool. Yeah, that was, fun. Yeah, that was beautiful. Yeah, I am, am I almost at a loss for words right now? I know there's so much to absorb. Yeah, there's, there's just a, a lot, lot of information, and it's it's almost with reverence. You listen for me, you know. I just want to take it all in and absorb it, and and I feel so grateful for that perspective. It was a very different experience than the first than the first time. Mm -hmm. Definitely. How would you yeah, describe it, it felt... Brian? Like difference wise. I don't know. I think I was more jaded the first time. And, you know, I mean, I don't, you know, and I still wouldn't say I put faith in it, but it's, uh, I don't, I don't know if I'm more open, obviously. I mean, the more time I spend with the two of you, the more open I get, you know, every, every day. Um, you know, so maybe I maybe I was in a better place to to receive it uh, and to and to hear and and to hear things. But I mean, I mean, it was a very you know your approach was very different. Um, how you communicated was was done very differently. So you know, I mean, it was a, it was a much I don't know it was an easier experience this time. Maybe because you're more casual. Interesting. Yeah, I think it, it makes sense to me. I felt like it was more of an intimate thing, intimate session than the last one. And to have that be one of his lessons to learn in this life. And like you said, maybe he's just already opening up. He's becoming open to more intimacy. So this reading yes. was going to be feel more that way. Yeah, the intimate connection. Um and like the intimate connection to people on this earth plane will push your soul to do the same, like in, in turn, you know, <laughs> on the, on and that I've definitely seen a change in, you know, we've been together just, I don't know, over a year, about a year and a half. And, you know, I see that in him that he's changed, that he's becoming more intimate and more open slowly but surely yeah it's interesting it's interesting that you say that like a year year and a half or whatever because i'm my brain right away went that's it because in the records it felt like 20 that years the two of us had been or together more. well and that's yeah. part yeah. of the question too because when we met you know it was one of those things where you like i just felt like finally you know i'm united with my Mm -hmm. my friend again <laughs> where has he been yeah. and it just felt right like i didn't yes. want to leave his side like it just always wanted to be together yeah that makes sense and the connection was not it wasn't like this physical passionate sexual connection oh i just have to be with this person all the time it was different it was such a more grounded feeling I was just yeah, going to say ground it until I saw that image like, again. It's like you're, you're, um, for me, it would be like my children, like that feeling that I have with them or, you know, a mother, father, or my sister or someone. Yeah. Like just comfort. this comfort level of, oh, okay. I know you and I've been with you so long. Like this yeah. is, okay, we got this. Yay. I feel like I'm home again. Yeah. Like it clicked. Yeah. Clicked yeah. into place. Like it wasn't an option not to be together. It just didn't, it just made sense. We got married four yeah, that's months why the, that after makes a lot we of met. Sense. And I had been yeah. married. <laughs> that makes sense. With I was just going to say I'd been married for 25 years. I didn't even want to go on a date. I just wanted space. Like, I just, I don't want to go out with anyone. Like, I need a break. 
but it just felt like I couldn't because this was the right thing to do. It was harder not to be with him. Yep. That would be, felt like the worst decision. <laughs> yeah, that's why, it, that's why it makes sense that the records were like, just we have to let you know over and over again that the timing was, they're like, see, the timing was exactly right. I, probably too, because I beat myself up a little like, you know, maybe I'm kind of a mental wreck sometimes and I feel like I put that on Brian and I'm like, maybe it's my, you know, I should have just given myself more time. Like maybe this, you know, I yeah. just rushed into things and I should have given myself more time to heal. Now you have to deal with me <laughs> and watching this healing process <laughs> instead of me healing first and then taking the time to be with you. But so, you know, the fact that they just kept emphasizing and I'm just, I was feeling very grateful. Like that was helping me to like, thank you for letting me know that it's all, it was all perfect. Yeah. And you're supposed to heal with his energy there, right. not without it there. You know, it's like, that's, it's your part of your contract is to do that work together. And, you know, life is messy. So it's going to be a messy process and we never stop healing. And there's something I read that was really great, which is like, it's okay if you don't heal something. It's okay if something goes unhealed, like if not in this lifetime, then the next or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, I think we feel like as a, this human culture of like, I need to like finish this or be okay. And I need to like, and it's like, no, sometimes it's okay to, uh, it's going to be healing is a messy process. Well, we have know? so many rules that we always bind ourselves to, whether it be, you know, relationships, so you break up with someone and, or you've been married for a really long time and, you know, your friends and society and probably even your psychologist is going to tell you just, you know, you, you need to just take time for yourself or you need this, you know, these mm -hmm. are the social norms of what is most healthy for you. And, you know, I think with spirituality, we just throw all the rules away. Just say, no, maybe that's not right. Like, cause this feels right to me. Yes. Well, you, yep. you brought that up in Brian's reading that it's more important for him to pay attention to how he's feeling versus the analytical part. Yes. Because that's like the new level he's on. It's like it was analysis and all this stuff before, but now that you're going, it's like, especially like, like I said, you meeting Lisa was like the mm -hmm. change point or the next level where it's like, okay, now it's time to get into my feeling body instead right. of my thinking, my brain. Which is probably why we've started doing yoga like four months ago, mm -hmm. five months ago. We just had Get this conversation the like an hour before yep, the show. We did. I was talking to him about something and I said, you know, it's okay for you to just tell me how you feel about that. Like you don't have to yeah. say you're just okay or it didn't affect you. And like you, you, you can tell me if that was hurtful or difficult or stressful. And he said, I don't have any feelings. <laughs> <laughs> I said, it's like well yeah you do you just get to tap into so them i was time. just i said okay but i'm just letting you know there's a space here for you for that when you're ready that's my yeah exactly part here Perfect. with you is yes exactly you're holding that space for right. that and on the new level it's it's if you're you know part of your biggest soul contract thing is connection and intimacy then that takes time to develop in the human body especially because we're mm -hmm. so dense <laughs> well Erin yeah I'm just tickled to death with your reading I thought it was great I'm actually whether you do it for me on the show or not I'm going to have you do a reading for me so <laughs> I'm just, just <laughs> good oh, no, I'm and so I hope happy. everyone who's listening to this just also uses your services it's just it was just great it's just great yeah I hope so too. Yeah, I do. Um, oh, I was going to say if I can talk about that. I don't know. Yeah, of course. Okay. So um, yeah, so I do 30 minute or 60 minute Akashic Records readings, just like what you heard today. Um, and I'm also doing, I don't know when this podcast is going to come out, but I'm also doing a class, but it's in Los Angeles um, on the 8th and the 9th to get certified in um, opening your own September, and others right? records um, in yeah September 8th and 9th. So it's not this weekend, but upcoming weekend um, in West LA. And um, so I'm doing that class, but also working one-on-one -on -one with people. I do 
Akashic Records, like I said, readings, but also workshops. So I have a two hour mini workshop that's like one on one. I also offer it for groups, but if people are out of town or they'd rather have the intimacy of just a one on one, it's a two hour workshop where I just teach you how to open your own records and ask questions and how to get the answers. And just, I help you, I facilitate you as you ask questions and see like the imagery you get back and how to um, translate that and all that. Do you do that Um, via Skype? So that. Okay. Yeah. Yep. I do it uh, via Zoom. So it's like a full workshop, two hours, and I teach you how to open your records and all that stuff. And, um, you know, you can use my prayer for it. So you'll have that so that you can, it's, it's a little bit more money than the reading, but it's cool because then from then on, you can open your own records anytime you want instead of getting readings from other people. You know what I mean? Or it helps you to develop, develop your own um, spirituality, spiritual practice, or just connection to spirit. Um, and also helps with connecting to self. Like the more work I do in the Akashic Records, even if it's just readings for other people, the more aware I become of my own um, circumstances, connection, and, and uh, yeah, it just really has helped me a lot in that area too, and building my own spiritual business. So I have that, and, um, and yeah, the class that's coming up also. Oh, that's amazing. I love that idea. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. I think that's great. It's really Because you just, you're empowering people to to do it there on their own as opposed to be dependent on people all the time. Yeah. And you know, you can go to readings with somebody else a bunch and get all these answers, but um, I'm seeing, and that's why I feel like I've been led to teach that it's like, it's like being a healer. I can't heal you, but I can hold the space for you to learn how to heal yourself and empower yourself. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I can help you, and facilitate you in healing yourself, but I can't just look at you and heal you. You know what I mean? Like you have to make the decision, you have to do the work. So, um, so yeah, that's why I really like teaching other people to, to do it themselves because then they are, my whole mission is, you know, getting people to trust themselves and trust that their path and their is, is leading them into their purpose instead of like, why am I here? This isn't working. I shouldn't be here or I'm doing things wrong. Um, and I think that that helps with the, that connection. Yeah, and you know? it teaches people to stop looking outside themselves and to go inward, which that facilitates more of. And as you said, I think building that trust in your own connection is very key and important to anyone on their journey of self-awareness and self-development. Exactly, exactly. It, it helps them to um, to connect and open they're just more open and break the stigma of this idea that this is only for a few gifted people (laughs) you know like I think just breaking that whole stigma is really cool too that's what I was saying like I feel like that hallway was open to me to be like to make it accessible and fun and cool you know what I mean as opposed to like oh like you're a fortune teller from the future it's like no this is we're not like this programmed idea of what um spirit spirituality is or people that practice spirituality or Akashic records or tarot or anything like that. Um, it's not fortune telling. It's just connecting to yourself. It, on a deeper it reminds level, me you know? of mm-hmm. just Jesus. Yeah. I just had this vision of and his true message that you can do everything. I can like, you don't need me. Like this is the stuff that you can do yourself. Yeah. So like I'm here to teach you exactly. that you don't need me. <laughs> I love, I love yeah. that. You have everything you already need. Mm-hmm. You have I'm just teaching you, teaching you how to tap into it. Like I'm here to teach you that you can do yep. this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's extremely empowering for myself and people. So it, it yeah, it just really is a, a beautiful um, mission that I was given. So I'm, I'm very grateful every day. Yeah. And I think overcoming that idea of also this matrix idea that the only way that you can um, be good at something is if you go to some sort of regulated institution and then they give you some sort of certificate or diploma that tells you you are now qualified to do this. You know, that that whole system teaches us to have our approval come from outside of us versus us approving of ourselves internally. So I just think this is great. Yeah, I have that like when people do certification for Akashic Records, because my class coming up on the 8th and the 9th is a level one certification class. And people are like, oh, where's the certification through? And I'm like, Air Inspirational with Aaron Gallagher, which is my company. (laughs) (laughs) And it's like, 
you know, the Akashic Records are not affiliated with anything. <laughs> They're a space that is free and open for anyone that is respectful of the space um, to do the work they need to do there. And it's really up to you and to whoever you're connecting with. And if it feels right, then it's right. And so I really liked, I feel like I'm here. Part of my mission is to also challenge that, that like the Akashic records aren't owned by anything. They're not, you know, they, they, they would let, like, whenever I ask about certification, cause I was nervous about that. I'm like, I'm giving certification, but I'm, I haven't been certified in Akashic records, this and that. And they were just, my master teachers and loved ones were just laughing. They're like, Cert how, <laughs> like, what does that even mean? Like, certified by whom yeah. like no and you know it's, it's yeah. funny because a lot of my coaching clients I can already see that this is exactly what they're supposed to be doing is coaching people and helping people and um that the process that I'm kind of helping guide them through is for them to recognize that within themselves that they already have all that and a lot of the times the answer is like but I don't I haven't got a certificate for the coaching and I'm like so either do I you know but it doesn't yeah. mean that you're not intuitively great at it or that you can't be really good at it through your own work and development and I think that's just something that's so ingrained in us and I know it was ingrained it prevented me from actually doing my coaching um, it took me almost 15 years to get past that fear of oh I don't have a coaching certificate backed by an institution that's recognized amongst the masses as being credible and so does that mean that I'm any good? Do I even know what to do? And it wasn't until I, I was talking to a guy who was also a coach, but, you know, and we were sitting down having coffee and, and he's like, Nicole, he goes, my whole coaching style goes against everything that um, people learn in coaching schools that actually are accredited. And, and he's like, because we're all individual, it should be something that is intuited you, you know, you don't want to train anyone or coach someone the exact same way. There's got to be some sort of, um, there's got to be some sort of leeway and flexibility to uh, maneuver and navigate the, the area that this person is working within to fit them because no two people are exactly the same and no two people learn the exact same way or hear messages the exact same way. And so you've got to really have that flexibility within you and the knowing then trust that it's just going to all come out exactly how it's supposed to. And you don't ever learn that in school. Exactly. Exactly. It's a, um, it's interesting because we are really programmed with the, you know, um, diploma. Certification. <laughs> I like go to school. for. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's great. I think I love what you're doing and I love that you're helping teach people to do it for themselves and to build their own internal guidance and, and trust within, because I think that's, what's going to really shift the collective in a really dramatic way. Um, is when yeah, that's yeah. part of my why is helping people, you know, tap into that awareness, open up, and then it, that helps shift our planet into its highest alignment, you know, is one by one. It's not a huge, I think people get caught up like, I need to make a huge impact with millions of people. No. It's like, yeah, no, one person at a time. Not. Exactly. Exactly. And as, and as you do it and more people see it happening, it inspires them to get involved and do it that way. So we just keep being the model, keep doing what you're doing, and eventually more people will recognize it and um, see it as you actually live in your life that way and people feel inspired to want to live their life that way if that's what feels right for them. Exactly, and helping them like gain trust. Like If you feel like you want to take this class or want to get certification, do it. Don't think, well, oh, is it certified in this and that because people ask me those questions and I'm like if you feel pulled to do this you're exactly. supposed to do it that's all I ha that's all mm -hmm. I can tell you mm -hmm. exactly. <laughs> the decision you is up to you yeah. I know you're having the one in, in West um, LA or do you do the certification program via uh, zoom as well so I when I do the class from my apartment I do because I have a big TV that I um, connect my zoom to so that it feels like everyone's in the same room. Um, so that's really cool. But I've have been feeling pulled to do my classes in like um, spaces and studios outside of my apartment, because it just seems a little bit more elevated. And also, it's nice to just have a separate space that's neutral um, to do it from. And so sometimes I run the classes out of my apartment. 
And I did that last time and it was like five students and three were online and two were here. Um, but it does get a little clunky because you have to like move the computer around and people are talking, like they'll talk to me, but also have to look at the screen. So, um, and I also do one-on-one, -on -one, but it's a 10 hour class. And because it's a 10 hour class and it's one-on-one -on -one time with me, it'd be like paying for a physical, like a physical therapist or whatever, as opposed to, or paying for a, um, let's see, what's the person that helps you with Nurse. health? I almost, I, physical therapist is wrong. No, like the, um, or it helps you personal, with fitness. Personal like, trainer. Personal trainer. That's well, okay. So it's like a personal trainer versus going to class, a fitness class. Yeah. Like a personal trainer versus getting a gym mm -hmm. membership. Yeah. So I charge, so it's like a way more expensive for the one-on-one -on -one because it's a 10 hour one-on-one -on -one class. So I do that as well, but it's a little bit more expensive, but, um, but yeah, I do them via zoom, but it's not as frequently as in person in LA. Okay. Great. Yeah. Well, thanks so. so much for coming back on and doing this. Thank you. It's been a joy. And I can't wait to if you guys want to do the same thing um, again with Lisa and Nicole, both of you guys. Yeah, we can, we can that. set that up. That would be a lot of fun. I'd be yeah, totally down for that. I would imagine maybe our listeners would be interested. Cool. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so thanks so much. And to all of our listeners, uh, we will leave all of Erin's information below in the show notes so that you guys can contact her if you're interested in getting your own Akashic reading done, being taught how to uh, do your own Akashic readings, um, all of that, or maybe get a tarot reading from her. Uh, we'll leave all of your details, Erin, uh, in the show notes. And for all of our listeners, if um, you have any questions for us, anything that you may like answered on the show during um, a, a show topic, then please send all of that into our email info at enlightenup.us. And if you need any more information about us, you can head on our show website, enlightenup.us. So thanks everyone for joining us this week, and we will be back again with you very soon. Mm -hmm.